A riff is a short, repeated, memorable musical phrase. Although strongly associated with rock music and the guitar, a riff can be played in any genre and on any instrument. The majority of riffs are between one and four bars in length. Any longer can sound like a melody or solo. All riffs are repeated. This is an essential part of the riff and how they hook themselves into the listener's mind. You could also call them a motif. That is, a musical idea that repeats. A riff can define a song. The first thing you hear in many songs is a riff, and they are the core part of many massive hits. Riffs are like a whole song, bundled up into a short, repeatable package. As such, they are comprised of three main parts, rhythm, harmony, and melody. This video is about Dorian riffs, so let's now turn our attention to the Dorian mode. The Dorian mode has a smooth, mellow sound. Despite its minor nature, it's not as heavy or sad as the Aeolian mode. For this reason, it is used widely in pop and rock to represent emotions that are somewhere between the happy major scale and the sad minor scale. Listen to how it sounds here with the A Dorian scale. I'll use the A Dorian mode now to demonstrate some different riff ideas. I'll present guitar tabs for the riffs, but remember that these ideas can apply to any instrument or MIDI. A Dorian is a guitar friendly key. You can play any of the open strings without being out of key. As such, it can open up all sorts of easy to play riff ideas. Almost anything can be a riff, but for ease, I'm gonna break them into a few categories here to help you think about different riff approaches. The sound or genre that you are aiming for may dictate the riff styles that you prefer. As always, trust your ear and go with it. Let's start with some interval based riffs. An interval is simply the distance between two notes. Intervals are the building blocks of chords and scales. As such, they are a great point to construct a riff from. The bulk of guitar riffs are played on the lower three strings. The E, A and D strings have power and authority associated with bass notes, as the bass generally defines the harmony above it. Denser strings also produce more volume. Because of this, I'll focus on these lower registers in the examples. If you are working with a scale, such as A Dorian here, you can experiment by playing two notes in the scale that create an interval you like the sound of. Once you find the interval you like, then you can work on the rhythmic idea for your riff. For example, here is a simple riff using the first two notes in the A Dorian scale, A and B. This interval is a distance of a tone or whole step. This is known as a major second interval. I'll play the interval and then develop the rhythm of the riff. So much of the riff writing process is experimentation. Grab your instrument and have fun with it. Intervals can be played horizontally like we just saw. This is what you would find in a melody. Or you can stack them vertically. That is when both notes are played at the same time. This is how chords are created. In the next example, I'll play the intervals at the same time. Listen to how this changes the sound. Each interval will have an open A note in it. Repeating a note like this in a riff is known as a pedal note. I'll discuss this in more detail later. Look out again for the development of the rhythm in this example. heard in the last example how important the rhythmic element was. The rhythm of a riff is what really makes it unique. A lot of riffs utilise syncopation to generate this rhythmic interest. This is where the weak beats in the bar are accented, rather than the usual strong beats. For example, in a 4-4 time signature, there are 4 beats in a bar. Usually the strong beats are 1 and 3, and the weak beats 2 and 4. But if we turn this on its head, then you create a syncopated rhythm. And if you utilise notes that don't fall on any of the beats, then it will feel even more syncopated. You can put a rest and avoid notes where the strong beats fall to further create a syncopated feel. We've looked at some of the notes in the A Dorian scale, but what creates the Dorian sound? When writing Dorian mode riffs, you want to try and highlight the notes that create a uniquely Dorian sound. These will be the notes that differ to other modes and scales. The points of difference between Dorian and major are the flat 3 and flat 7 notes. Here that is C and G. The third note of a scale is important as it will reveal the quality of the scale. A third will have a major sound and a flat third will have a minor sound. It's also worth comparing Dorian with the natural minor slash Aeolian scale. In relation to the major scale, that has the notes 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6 and flat 7. The point of difference here is the natural sixth note. This also separates Dorian from other minor scales. So two notes we really want to focus on are the flat 3 and the 6. In the key of A Dorian, this would be the notes C and F sharp. Here's an example focused around C and F sharp and also using other A Dorian notes in the same position on the guitar. 
Listen to the hammer on from F sharp to G and then the same rhythm when moving from C to D. A is also the lowest note in the riff, which reinforces its role as the root or tonic. <laughs> Let's talk now about pedal note riffs. A pedal note is one that remains the same, usually low down in the arrangement, whilst other notes or chords change above it. This will usually use open E, A and D strings on the guitar. If the note doesn't sustain throughout the riff, it may also be referred to as a pedal point. It will often be the root note of the relevant scale that is repeated to really anchor the listener in the key of the song, but it doesn't have to be, so feel free to experiment. If you've heard metal riffs with palm muted E strings throughout, they are an example of this. This might be one reason to try a drop tuning, like drop D, to get a suitable open note to pedal throughout your riff. You saw an example earlier that had a pedal note. Here's one in A Dorian that again uses the A open string, but also the C and F sharp notes we want to target. <laughs> A drone riff is very similar to a pedal note riff, but the repeated note is usually higher in the register than the rest of what you are playing. People will often use drone when referring to a single tone that runs through an entire piece of music, not just a riff. This is an essential part of Indian classical music. You'll hear a drone idea in Good Riddance by Green Day, with a high D note played drawing every single chord. Whether you choose to use pedal note, drone, or any other term for these riffs, they will always have a single note running through them. In this next example, the open D note is used throughout the riff. Now it's time for a classic riff component, the power chord. A favourite of rock and metal, the power chord is a simple, powerful element in many iconic riffs. A power chord is actually just a perfect fifth interval, so it relates back to the first two examples in this video. Power chords are often used with pedal notes that we discussed previously. On guitar they are usually played as two note chords, with the first and fifth, or as three note chords, with the octave added above the fifth. If using a distorted guitar sound, you might also find other techniques used with power chords, such as palm muting and slides. A simple starting point for generating power chord riffs is to use each note in the relevant scale of your song as the root note for a power chord. As with other riffs, the rhythmic element is almost more important than the actual notes being played. Here's an example in A Dorian using four different power chords. <laughs> The power chord riff leads us nicely into the full blown chord riff. As the name suggests, this is simply combining full chords into a riff. This is where the lines between chord progression and riff can become blurred. But as discussed earlier, the riff will be shorter and more rhythmically driven than a chord progression. Chord based riffs are easy to have a go at. Just pick one or more chords from a key and start experimenting with the rhythm. For example, here are the diatonic chords in the key of A Dorian. If you want to learn more about Dorian chords and progressions, there will be a link at the end of this video. A simple and popular chord progression uses the one chord A minor and the four chord D major. Let's take these chords as the basis of our riff. You can use simple chords like this, but you are not limited. Different chord types can open up interesting sounds, and on the guitar there can be the simple addition or taking away of a finger. This can add rhythmic elements that help elevate us beyond the chord progression. In the next example, I explore this idea by using sus4 versions of A and D. The rhythmic variations are short enough to feel like a riff and not a chord progression. Closely related to the chord riff is the arpeggio riff. An arpeggio is a type of broken chord in which the notes that compose a chord are individually sounded in a progressive, rising or descending order. Arpeggios on keyboard instruments may be called rolled chords. Add in rhythmic changes and possibly other techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs and you can use this as a basis for an interesting riff. I'll use the same chords as in the previous example, but this time they will be arpeggiated. Listen for the hammer-on to move to the A sus4 chord in the first bar. Also note where the accented notes are and how this makes the riff feel. So far we've only been using notes that are in the Dorian mode, but you don't have to box yourself in like this 
when creating riffs. You can reach for any notes that you like the sound of. This introduces the idea of modal mixture or modal interchange. This is where you use notes from parallel scales within your riffs. Parallel scales have the same root note as the scale you are using. For example, we are using A Dorian here, so parallel scales would include A major, A mixolydian, and A harmonic minor, amongst others. A lot of riffs aren't considered in this level of detail and created more spontaneously. I'd recommend going for this approach to begin with and just reach for notes and sounds that you like. The short nature of a riff won't usually undermine the tonal centre of your song, but you can also be more deliberate and target certain chromatic notes. I'll attempt this in the next example. It is very similar to an earlier riff that targets the key A Dorian notes, C and F sharp. This time I'll also utilise the chromatic F note to allow us to reach from G to E in a descending half step nature. A riff can come into the songwriting process at different times. It could be that you create a great riff in isolation and this inspires you to write the rest of a song. Remember that they contain rhythm, melody and harmony. This song DNA can be unpicked from the riff and lead to quick songwriting. Concentrate on the notes that are emphasised or stand out. These will lead you to suggested chord changes. You could also take an existing chord progression and turn this into a riff. This might be by using chord notes or whole chords as we saw earlier. Or you could take a song melody and use it for your riff inspiration. This is particularly useful for finding rhythmic hooks for your riffs. Sometimes starting with some limitations can really help your riff writing process as it narrows down infinite possibilities to focus your attention. With that in mind, let's now use a song I've written in other videos on the channel as an example. It currently has a simple intro that alternates from A minor to D major. This is in order to establish the tonal centre of the song. I want a nice simple riff here to introduce the song and lead to the verse. It will use notes from the chords A minor and D major in order to do this. It ends on an F sharp note in an arpeggiated manner. This is because F sharp is in the D major chord and also this is the root note of the first chord in the verse. Have a listen to how the riff sounds as well as the rest of the song. I hope this will inspire you to have a go at writing your own Dorian riffs. You've learned about Dorian riffs, but there's a world of Dorian songwriting out there. I've created a Dorian playlist just for you right here. It includes the final song with the chords and melody that you just heard. Click it now to continue your Dorian journey.